Um, so understand that um, that we're all trying to create uh, three other order pairs that all hit the same location. Okay, so we always look at the theta first. So we can kind of have an idea where we're uh, where we're dealing with. So seven power six, where's this located? It's seven power six mm -hmm. is it's the line below the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so third quadrant, right? Okay, so you know it's in the third quadrant, uh, <clears throat> right? So normally we would say seven power six is here. But this radius is going to tell you whether to walk towards or away. So this negative three means I'm going to walk away from this seven pi over six. I'm always going to be starting at the origin. So I'm going to be walking away. So three units away is going to be in the first quadrant. One, two, three. OK, does that make sense? Yes. OK, so now I want to be able to create three other order pairs that also hits the same point. Okay. So an easy one is first quadrant. First quadrant, which um, what's the radian measure of this? Power six. Power six, OK. So. And I'm walking three units towards power six to hit that point, so that's good, right? So now I want to find another variation of third quadrant that's same as seven pi over six, but I know that I can get um, co-terminal angles if I add or subtract what? Two pi. Two pi. So we say you don't know whether to add or subtract two pi. Well, um, if we go in the wrong direction, we're going to be outside the interval. So for instance, if I did um, seven pi over six, plus two pi. I'm going to end up with 19 pi over six. And 19 pi over six is more than two pi because two pi is 12 pi over six. Right, so we know this is too, too large. So seven pi over six minus 12 pi over six will give me negative five pi over six. And that is equivalent to a third quadrant. So I'm, and and it's it's between negative two pi and two pi, so now I can also say towards I can uh, to hit the same point, I can go three units away from the third quadrant, so negative three. Good so far. Yeah. Okay. So now I have two variations of quadrant three. Now I need to find another variation of power of six. So if I want to find a code terminal angle of power six, I can do what? You add pi. Remember, we're always either adding or subtracting two pi. Um, so if, because if you add pi, you're back to the third quadrant. And we already have two things for third quadrant. We don't have only quad, third quadrant anymore. You could subtract two pi. which is negative 11 pi over 6, which does fall inside the interval. The only time you want to add or subtract pi is if you're trying to get to the opposite quadrant. Let's say you knew that you're dealing with 7 pi over 6, but you want to get to pi over 6. You can subtract pi to get to pi over 6. Right. But if you're trying to find something that's same as the quadrant you're living in, then you're either adding or subtracting two pi. <clears throat> At least I'm going to help them with uh, the pre-cal stuff and then I'll help you. Yeah, it's not at the end. You can be here. <laughs> Should let you know. 
OK. Uh, Hey, uh, Kelly and Yusuf, do you guys have any specific questions you have for me? I don't know whether you want to go through the whole worksheet or whether you want to ask specific questions. No, I'm pretty good. Could you go over uh, the cube root ones? Because I, I, I'm lost. On yeah. That. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm going to skip to the back of the worksheet, but you can. All right, so uh, <clears throat> number 12. Number 12 says find the cube roots of root 3 minus i. All right, so um, whenever we're dealing with these uh, uh, cube roots, um, there's two options here. Uh, either you're given something in rectangular form or you're given something in polar form. Um, Rectangular form takes a little bit longer, polar form is a little bit quicker. So um, first thing you want to do is you always want to try to um, get R and theta. So if you're given A plus BI, first thing you want to do is get your R and get your theta. And then make sure you're living in the appropriate quadrant. Okay. Now, after you get your R and theta, you can build your complex uh, polar number, polar form, which is R CIS theta, or I can do it as R cosine theta plus I sine. All right, so now you want to find the roots. So it's always going to be z to the 1 over n equals r to the 1 over n times cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. And the n is always going to match whatever root you're dealing with, cube root, fourth root, fifth root. It's going to be, the, you know, oops, sorry, my bad. I messed up something here. Not time, not n times theta. It's one over n times theta. Now, after we do this, we have one of the solutions. And then um, if I want to find the other solutions, I'm going to add 2 pi over n. And, and that will allow me to space out all my solutions evenly across my circle. So either 2 pi over n or 360 over n, depending on um, which um, form we're in. You typically, we're in um, radians, so typically, typically we'll use 2 pi over n. OK, so I'll refer back to these notes as we go through it. So here's number 12. Find the cube roots of root 3 minus i. So first thing, uh, find my radius. The root 3 minus i is the same thing as root 3 minus 1i. So radius is just square root of a squared plus b squared. Which is two. All right, root three minus i. If I think about this, or if I just go to the right one and down one, I know I'm in quadrant four. 
So when I find my theta, I just have to make sure I'm living in quadrant four. Okay, so theta is equal to inverse tangent of B over A. Okay, this is the unit circle value. Inverse tangent of negative one over root three. This is y over x. So if I look at a unit circle here, negative one over root three, that's going to be y over x. That's going to be 11 pi over six. Right, if I cover up the two, which is negative one over root three. All right, so I have my R and theta. Now I can work towards building my complex number, right? So C equals R, which is two. Cosine of theta plus I sine of theta. All right, now I'm gonna Find the cube root, so my n is three, so I'm going to raise my r to the one over thirty, and then multiply my theta by one third. Do some cleanup here. OK, so this is my first solution. I need to find two more because cube root means I'm looking for three solutions because n equals three. So then to find my other solutions, I'm going to go through my pattern here. So my pattern is add. 2 pi over n. My n is 3, so I'm going to add 2 pi over 3. I'm going to find common denominators to so make it easier for me since I'm not, we're not, we're doing this without a calculator. So plus 2 pi over 3 is the same as full pi over 18. All right, 3 times 6 is 18, 2 times 6 is 12. I'm just going to keep adding 12 pi over 18 until I get to all three of my solutions. So I have one solution here, second solution, two to the one third. So 11 plus 12 is 23. Second, that's my second solution. Third solution, 23 pi plus 12 pi, so that's 35 pi. You can write this as two to the one third, or if you want to write as cube root of two, that's fine as well. It's up to you. Okay, any questions? No, all right, thank you. Now 13 is also finding the roots, but it's a little bit easier because it already gives it to you in terms of, of um, <clears throat> R and theta, so it saves a bit of steps because you don't have to find R and theta. It already gives it to you. So if you look at 13 here, 13 says find the fourth root of Z3. And Z3 is 2 cosine of power over 4 plus I assign power four. So if the complex number or if the polar form is already given to you, then it saves a step, right? You don't have to find R and theta. You already see R and theta. You just have to build your 
um, complex first complex number and then find your other solutions by going through your pattern. OK, so you do the same thing you did on 12, but you use one fourth instead of one third. Exactly. And you get yeah. four solutions. Right, right. Okay. You get four solutions. And we're saving some steps because the R and theta is already given to you. Right, so there is my first solution. I know I'm looking for three more because it says fourth root. So I want four solutions in total. So my pattern is I'm going to add. Two pi over n. In this case, my n is four. And if I want to match common denominators there, it's the same thing as 8 pi over 16, right? Okay, so I'm going to keep adding 8 pi over 16 until I get to four solutions. So 1 plus 8 is 9. Nine plus eight is seventeen. And then seventeen plus eight is twenty five. So there we have it, four solutions. How would you tell if it's supposed to have four solutions instead of three? Well, it says find the fourth root. Oh, all right. Right, so whatever root you have, whatever number you see there, that's the number of solutions you're looking for. So fifth root will be five solutions. Sixth root will be six solutions. Okay, I think, yeah, uh, the roots are the hardest ones because the other ones you're just following formulas and um, going through your um, multiplication, division, and uh, power. Just be careful that when like problems like number 11, if you're raising to a power, you're only getting one solution, right? So you're not finding multiple solutions un unless it's a cube or fourth root. So if you're just raising to a power, uh, a whole number power, then you're just doing one solution. So yeah, I think the rest of it is just, if you know the formula, you just apply the formula and it's just one step to the answer. So yeah, let me know if you have any other ones you want me to go over specifically since you guys have the key. You don't have to go over this, but if you're like graphing, like on number six, if you're graphing, let's say negative root three, you just estimate, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, just estimate, yeah. <laughs> would you graph negative um, square root of three? Well, yeah, so it, it's not, uh, it's kind of like an estimation. So you know that square root of one is one, right? You know that square root of four is two. So square root of three is somewhere between one and two. So 1 1.4, 1 1.5, right? right? You're trying to find two numbers that multiply to be three, more than one, but less than two. So you know, it's a good estimation there, 1 four ish. You go over um, number seven. Mm -hmm.
Okay, number seven says uh, convert negative two plus two root three i to polar form. So this is my a and b value. So just like before, I'm going to be using my initial formulas there, find r and find theta. Right, so here's my r. Okay, so two squared is four. Now two root three squared, I got to square both my two and the root three, so it's four times three, which is 12. So root 16 is four. My R. Now theta, I need to do um, inverse tangent. And also I want to kind of point out which quadrant I'm in, right? So negative two plus two root three, I'm going left two. Up to root three, so quadrant two. Now I'm going to reduce this to make it easier for me to find this on the unit circle. So basically, I'm asking where is tangent equal to negative three over one, or um, y over x is negative three over one. So if I look at my unit circle here, root three over one, that's going to be two pi over three, right? If it's one over root three, then it'll be um, five, five pi over six. But root three over one, I know it's going to be two pi over three, second quadrant. So I have my R, I have my theta, and now I can build my polar form. Mm -hmm. If I wrote it like the force is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's the same thing. Would that be fine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just tell my students to do it this way because sometimes I see students, they forget what this means and they don't know what this is doing. So, but yeah, this is per these are perfectly fine. See those one. I think that's everything I need to help with. Okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah, you could share. Yeah, yeah. You can All right. Uh, Kilan, Yusuf, anything else? No, I'm good. good. Thank you. Thank you. See you. All right. See you in class. Okay. See you. See you in class.